It's time to rethink everything you think you know about using a mouse, because the way that you use yours could be holding you back from being a faster editor. So in this video, I'm going to show you the change that you need to make to drastically speed up your workflow, how I and other professional editors utilize this, and the ways that you can use this to not only make editing easier, but also transform the way that you use a computer. So what is this magical change? Well, a standard mouse has a left click, a right click, and a scroll wheel button. And for most people, that's pretty much the limit of how the mouse is used. But this is massively holding you back because there's so much more that your mouse can do than just these three things. In fact, if you set your mouse up in the way that I'm about to show you, then your scroll wheel button will be able to not only be used for dragging your timeline back and forth, but it can have lots of different uses like bringing the playhead straight to the cursor. It can also be used to trim footage with just one click, just like this. It can also add a title or an effect straight to your timeline with just a single tap. No more having to go up to the effects browser and search around for what you're after. Now you can just press this one button and it comes straight to your mouse. So to be able to do this, you need to use a third party app that can receive a mouse command and then send out a different command. So in this case, it would receive the middle mouse button and then it could send out something as simple as command C, for example. So to do this, I use an app called Keyboard Maestro. This is a Mac only app, but if you're on Windows, then there's a free app called Auto Hotkey, which can do the same thing. I have no affiliation at all with either of these apps, these are just what I like to use. So inside of Keyboard Maestro, I can set up different custom commands for when the middle mouse button is pressed. And the secret to being able to set up so many different ones is by using the modifier keys on the keyboard. So if I press the middle mouse button inside of DaVinci, it's gonna act like it normally would, just dragging the timeline back and forth. But if I now hold the command modifier and press the middle mouse button, it's now gonna trigger this Keyboard Maestro command, which is gonna cut the end of the clip off. And if I hold down the option modifier and press the middle mouse button, it's now going to activate a different command. This one is gonna cut off the start of the clip. There's four modifier keys on a Mac with 15 different ways of combining them. So you can have 16 different functions with just your middle mouse button alone. And if you want to expand this even further, you can get a mouse that has extra buttons like mine. I use the Logi MX Master 3. So this mouse has four extra buttons, one on top, two on the side and another one down here. So with these four extra buttons and the scroll wheel button, all with the possibility of having 16 different functions each, that's 80 different things that I can do with just my mouse. Do I do 80 different things with my mouse? No, nah. but I'm really not far off because I've been doing this for years and adding on more and more as I go. So now that you understand how you can unlock all of these extra options on your mouse, here's how you can make the most out of these options by doing things that you can't actually normally do inside of DaVinci Resolve. Starting with trimming clips at the cursor. Years ago, I used to use Final Cut Pro and I really liked how I was able to just hover my mouse over a clip and to be able to instantly trim where my cursor is without having to click and drag the playhead to that position. And I also liked how I could click anywhere in the timeline and the playhead would just jump to my mouse. But in DaVinci Resolve, you can't do that very easily. You have to either go to the top of the timeline and then click in this space to bring the playhead to that point or use a keyboard shortcut to bring the playhead straight to the mouse and then click on the clip and use a keyboard shortcut to then trim the clip. Which if you're doing this over and over again, becomes a bit of a faff really. This is where Keyboard Maestro comes in. In my previous video where I talked about custom keyboard shortcuts, I went into more depth about how you can use Keyboard Maestro to set up macros. A macro is essentially a set of actions that happens one after the other. So when you send a command to Keyboard Maestro, like holding down the control modifier key and then pressing the middle mouse button, it doesn't have to send out just one command, but it can send out a series of commands, which then ends up with the end result of the clip being trimmed. So in this case, I'll hover my mouse over a clip and without even having to select it, I can just hold down the control modifier and then press the middle mouse button and Keyboard Maestro will left click on the clip and then press the C button. This is the keyboard shortcut for bringing the playhead to the mouse. This can be found in the DaVinci Resolve keyboard customization menu under playback, go to, and then it's this one here called mouse pointer. And then lastly, 
it will do the keyboard shortcut Shift Command F7, which I have set up in the keyboard customization menu as Enter Playhead, which will then cut the end of the clip off after where the playhead is. And it does all of this in just a split second. It's really that simple. And now with my supercharged mouse, I'm able to do a whole bunch of things. I can move the playhead straight to my cursor just by holding down the option button and pressing this top button anywhere on the timeline. I can trim the start and the end of clips off without even having to left click to select them first. I just move my cursor where I want to trim and just click the scroll wheel button to chop off the end and this top button to chop off the start. I can also have these ripple trim as well just by holding down command and hitting these same buttons. So if I'm cutting up the A roll it's unbelievably fast just to ripple trim with my mouse and for those of you who don't know what ripple trim is it's when you delete something in your timeline and then it moves everything after that clip back down the timeline by the amount that was deleted. So this would be a normal trim and this would be a ripple trim. Another thing I can do is delete clips. I can just hover my mouse over a clip and press the bottom button on my mouse and it deletes that clip. It's really that simple. And to make this even easier for you, I've left a download link below this video which includes a bunch of templates that I've made for Keyboard Maestro and also a PDF on how to install and use them. Once you have these set up, you'll wonder how you ever edited without it. But cutting clips isn't the only thing that this can be used for. And if you do what I'm about to show you, then you can take your editing speed up a whole nother level. Gone are the days of having to move the cursor up to the effects browser and scroll through the titles and effects to find what you're after and then drag them into your timeline. Now you can just click a button on your mouse and it will come straight to your cursor. Again, I went into detail about how this is done in my previous video, but the way that I use this with my mouse is to quickly add my own presets. I have a pack of 21 DaVinci Resolve presets that includes effects, transitions, titles, and generators that have all been made to allow me to edit faster and make my workflow so much simpler. And I have these set up so I can access them instantly. So if I want to add my in and out transition, I just hold the option key down and press the scroll wheel button and it will bring the transition straight to my clip. Select the type of transition I want from all of the different options and it's done. I can also enable multiple different transition types together to create different styles. If I want to add a gradual push animation, I just hold the option control and press this side button and it will add my gradual animation preset. And now my clip will slowly zoom in throughout the whole clip and I can adjust the speed and the position of it as well. My presets also come with buttons that will move the playhead on the timeline for you. So you can just set the A controls and then click this button to move the playhead to where the end of the animation is and then set the B controls. It's all built in so that you spend less time moving the cursor back and forward between the inspector and the timeline and more time doing what matters. So if you want yet another way to speed up your workflow, you can check out my Essentials preset pack in the description below. So now when I'm editing, my mouse is loaded up with ways that speed up my workflow. Things that I've customized to suit the way that I like to edit. But editing fast isn't all you can do with your power mouse. You need to make the most out of this thing and set it up across your entire computer. So for example, I use my top button to open new tabs in my web browser and in my finder. I use the scroll wheel button to create new folders in my finder and refresh web pages. The time that all of these shortcuts saves really does build up and it's what professionals have been doing for years. Finding ways to get rid of repetitive tasks, reduce the number of clicks and ultimately free up time to be able to focus on making a better edit. And even though being able to open up a new tab and go onto YouTube and watch football videos isn't directly linked to making me a faster editor, the fact that I can fly around my computer and get to these different places quickly is. But editing faster isn't enough to actually make you a better editor. For that, you need to know how to create edits that your clients and their viewers will love. So click on this video to see how I edit videos for a YouTube expert who gets millions of views.